All right, cool. We are live. Welcome in, everyone. Uh, my name's Nick. This is another Loophole Live. Uh, today, I got John with me, John Warren from our marketing department. And uh, we're going to be talking about range day stuff today, which is li it's, it's my favorite day. I get goody like a kid. Yeah, no doubt. All right, I can't sleep the night before. The, the thing about range day for me is just getting to hang out with people, right? Yeah, because you're going with your buddies. Yeah. yeah, you're going with your buddies. You're going to shoot. Maybe you've got a you got a rough week. Maybe you need to blow off some steam, right? And you go to the range, and it's it, it's it's fun. Well, you, you hope it's fun, because sometimes it's not fun, right? Yeah, because you run yeah. into issues, you have stuff go wrong, yeah. and so a little bit today, what we're going to talk about is you know some some tips and tricks, um, how to be prepared, you know, at the range. We're going to go through your range bag here, actually. Can I do a range bag dump? Yeah. See what you got in there. Uh, maybe give you guys some ideas of uh, stuff you can put into your range bag. Yeah, no doubt. So, um, the, but uh, <coughs> I, I do have to mention, we are going to be giving away a range bag, too. So our buddies over at Vertex hooked us up. Uh, Dan and Justin, thank you guys. Um, you're, you're actually going to be giving away that range bag right there. Well, but but actually, I knew, I knew a, a new one. one. You don't get this. This is mine. <laughs> you don't want that one. This one's, there there this might one's, be some other stuff yeah. in there that I probably don't yeah. want. Right? Uh, so uh, let's see, the importance of the range. I guess let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Why? Why? Why do you go to the range? Uh, I go to a range to test TTPs, te tactics, uh, tactics and uh, procedures. Okay. So uh, if I'm going to prove out something I'm going to use in a competition or maybe a new theory. Yeah. Uh, then I go to the range. T or TTPs. So yeah. so John's uh, uh, military. So he likes using those acronyms. We'll, we'll put that out of the way. Government right oppressor. Now. Government <laughs> oppressor. Sorry. Uh, yeah, so, so TTPs, yeah, that's yep, good. That, and uh, just like anything, reps, right? Just okay. going and getting reps, good practice. Yeah, good practice, right? And just just um, going to make yourself better. Yeah. That's what I, I you know, I, I think a lot of times we go to the range maybe without a plan or, you know, we just go there to just shoot some rounds, which is which is good. Yeah, but it has its I, place. It has its yeah. place. But I think going to the range with purpose um, uh, is going to be beneficial in the long yep. run, right? Yep. You're going to make yourself better and... Um, yeah, we're so so we'll just go through a couple things you want to do kind of before you get to the range. Yeah, I mean the prep work starts at home. Um, one thing that I want to mention, you know, we we're talking about range stuff here, but um, one thing I want to mention is dry fire practice. Yeah, um, and and you can do that anywhere, right? Yep. So that's one of the best parts of uh, uh, um, of of training is dry firing. You do it in your house, you do it in the garage, you do it wherever you want, Yeah. and you can really work on those techniques. Especially right? with all the apps now. Like, uh, oh, yeah. I, I use this thing called Mantis. It connects to my phone. It has a motion sensor on okay. it. It lets me know if I'm, uh, if I'm not doing the right thing. Mantis. Yeah. Huh. We'll have to check that out. Yeah. Or you can just, uh, I, I'll watch the TV, and I'll use the, yeah. the uh, points on the yeah. TV that are moving yeah. to like kind of work. I can't count the amount of times I've dry fired on Joey from Full House. <laughs> like, Joey. Do my kids love that show? Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. I'm, you're watching that by yourself. I know you yeah, are. Yeah, I am. Yeah. yeah. So, so um, the um, the first thing is, and actually, we we put out a, um, a tips and tricks or uh, five essential things you need to know uh, uh, about the range uh, story on our website. So go go on the website, check it out. It's on the homepage. Click on it. We're going to kind of run through those first. Um, though, so the number one is have a plan. I think that's super important. Like yeah. again, um, there's there's a time place to go to the range when you're just kind of messing around. Yeah. But um, go like, okay, I'm gonna go to the range and I'm gonna work on reloads today, yeah. right? I'm just gonna work on reloads. Yep. Uh, but uh, maybe I'll do half the day reloads, half the day like moving and reloading, yep. right? And I think um, yeah, you gotta have an end state. Yeah, end state. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. What were you talking about? We were talking about earlier. Um, you were talking about Backward, starting. Uh, yeah, backwards yeah. planning. Yeah, backwards uh, planning. Yeah. Explain so, that a little bit. Yeah, so in backwards planning, uh, it's, it's a really common uh, sort of way to plan for things in the military or just even in, even in business. Uh, you start with the end state. So if my end state is I'm going to the range to work on reloads, mm -hmm. all right, I start there and then I plan everything back. Hey, how okay. am I going to get to the range? What do I need to action? Gotcha. Uh, you know that plan. Yeah. Uh, and then, how do I set up my equipment in a way that uh, you that that lessens the amount of time uh, that I'm having to move my body, so economy of motion. Right. Uh, and how do I put that and pack that in a way that's easy to get to? Yeah. Right. That's and then, when are you going to start to initiate? The that's plan? an interesting concept. Yeah. I actually have not plan that way going to the range so that's something I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna actually start doing please, that. please do because when we go to the range <laughs> it is the worst yeah. 
Yeah, I don't think so. I've, I've seen way worse than me. So um, we uh, we also have questions coming in too, guys. Type your questions, um, and I got them live right here on my phone. Um, so uh, and uh, we'll be addressing these kind of throughout. <laughs> Uh, on IG, some fisher wants to know what uh, hair products you use. Actually, uh, actually, not range related, but well, actually, it is range related uh, because look it, good, feel good, yeah. shoot good, no right? Doubt. Yeah. So I use two. Uh, one is a reformer uh, from Paul Mitchell, and the other is the old tried and true Suavecito. Nice. Stings a little bit when you sweat, <laughs> but a little bit of pain's good for you. I don't have good enough hair for hair products. Don't you forget it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, where do we get those shirts? Line, uh, Line Life Daily on IG. So you see the loophole gear and stuff. Uh, go on the loophole website and you can um, you can find a dealer. And uh, I think there's a couple online dealers too. I don't know which one's offhand, but I know they're out there. You can get them. So uh, yeah, if you guys didn't know, we have a whole line of pro gear too. Not you know, don't want to make this a plug or yeah. anything like that. But we we got some pretty cool uh, pro gear stuff. Um, so let's move on to number two. Um, know your gear. Yep. I think that's super important. Um, to know your gear and be familiar with it before you get to the range. Um, kind of goes along with dry fire practice, yeah. stuff you can do at your house. Um, so if you get a new new gun, right, uh, run through the gun, know all the controls, yep. know how it works, yep. inside and out, well, take it apart, clean especially, it. especially because a lot of the times people are getting their information from social media and stuff like that. Yeah. Hi, we're on social media. <laughs> uh, but uh, a lot of the times, you know, especially like as a younger person, you know, uh, or somebody who's maybe new to the sport of shooting, you're you're watching these people that are influencers, and you're like, man, I want to run that gear. Yeah. Maybe that gear doesn't work for you. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe that gear, you know, doesn't achieve the end state that you're trying to achieve. That's true. You know, you see a guy wearing like a really cool belt, right? Yeah. And he's got all the gear on it, and yeah. you tried it, but it just doesn't work. Yeah. For you, you might right? be all time chubs like me, and it doesn't. <laughs> they don't fit you. Like <laughs> so, so test it out at your house first. You know, put it together. Don't you know? You you got to maximize. Make the most of yeah. your time at the range. Yeah. And you don't want to be sitting there uh, assembling, you know, your, your new yeah. war belt or whatever, yeah. you know. On, I'm, I'm, range, I'm so. also a fan of less is more. Okay. Uh, so a lot of the times you go to the range or something and yeah. or you, you hang out with one of your maybe new friends who's just getting into a sport and you have a tendency to just like dive into it, right? And you're like, <laughs> right. I need, you know, I need 10 mag pouches. I need, you know, eight IFACs. I need all this stuff. When really you just, you know, once you figure out and you master what you're doing, then you know the like the essential things that you need and usually when it when you're talking about essentials it becomes a minimal process of gear of right gear. right yeah i actually have written that down um kind of the goldilocks amount of yeah, gear right yeah. you don't want to you don't want to have five duffel bags full of gear yeah. at the range but you also don't want to be under prepared so yeah again practicing at home knowing your stuff knowing your gear what it does yep. i think that's super uh super important um let's see um, do, 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 do. Um, let's see. Looks like we're having some issues on um, Facebook. Um, it's not letting us stream for whatever reason, but uh, we're live on YouTube. Uh, of course, Instagram there. So just wanted to uh, point that out. Oh, um, in the know your gear and kind of be prepared part. Uh, also, let's talk a little bit about uh, medical preparedness. Yeah and trauma kit and stuff yeah. like that. So what do you what do you carry? Uh, I actually, I carry this kit right here. It just kind of clips on. I take it from my truck nice. or my Subaru because I'm a crunchy Portland kid. <laughs> he does. Uh, he, he literally do does a drive Subaru. a Subaru. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. It's That's an Outback. It's like a man Subaru kind yeah. of. Yeah, well, you're going to lift it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Uh, so this is a really neat thing from like North American Rescue. Basically has everything I need for TCCC. Uh, we got combat gauze, quick clot, tourniquets. Obviously, the most important thing you can carry for the range is a tourniquet. Yeah. Some trauma shears. Um, basically, has everything uh, to stop the bleeding. Yep. So if you do, if you do, uh, you know, yep. if you are unfortunate enough to get shot, uh, or I mean, even if you, you know, fall on something and maybe impale yourself or something like that, right? Like the right. most important thing is to stop the bleeding. Right. Exactly. And, and be able to stuff something in that hole. Yeah, that's to, all, to keep everything. On my in. belt, I carry a tourniquet and some quick clot. Right? Yeah, yep, Those are the two have, things yep. I can go to super quick yep. if something happens. Yep. Um, and y it's really not a lot to carry, right? No. And uh, it's always good to be prepared. Also, you know, knowing your gear, knowing how to use, knowing that your gear. medical kit, yep. how to use it, right? Because yep. Something's gonna happen, and and you're gonna be you know going crazy and can't think straight, yep. and you need to be able to know wh what does what, yep. how to get to it, yep. you know, being familiar. Yeah, with a, it. A one thing that a lot of people don't think of is you know everyone wants to talk about dry fire, but nobody practices putting tourniquets on. 
You yeah, know? yeah, it was. So it's it's not fun, right? No, it's not because you gotta <laughs> you know you go through the wrapping and there's no. If you do not, it right, yeah. it hurts like. Hell. But yeah, putting a tourniquet on is not like sexy. You no, know? you're just like running over to someone, sliding a loop on them, pulling it really tight, and right. cinching something down. Right, right. You know, but it's literally yeah. life. It's a life saving technique. Yeah, I I I rather know how to use a tourniquet than like draw really fast. Yeah, rather do something yeah. like that. You know, yeah. so you know, practice practice the tourniquet. So, um, make a checklist. This is, uh, this is something that I had meant to do for a really long time, and I never got around to it. Yeah. And once I did, it made things so much easier. Yeah. Because I got all my gear in my garage. It's range day. Okay, I'm going to go. And it was just like grand grabbing random gear, put it in the truck, drive. Yeah. You always forget something, yeah. right? So having a checklist that you can run down and, and through um, makes things super simple. Yep. And you don't have to think about it. And you're gonna again uh, mitigate those instances instances at the range yeah. where you forget something and then you have a crappy time. Yeah, because all range. I mean, when it, like pretty much every time I'm packing, you know, my kids are talking to me or something like that, and I'm like <laughs> try right. I'm like you know missing a piece of gear because I'm you know right. you know giving them a glass of water or something like that, you know. So <laughs> yeah, right. it's good to have those visual. Ch yeah. The yeah, visual yeah. checklists. Right. Yeah. It it sounds nerdy and dorky, but you know, having a checklist. But makes, checklists are really cool. But checklists are cool. Um, <clears throat> let's see. The CCA Tritical, what is it and why is it the greatest? Uh, Rifleman's Pursuit, not uh, well, kind of a range topic. I guess yeah. we'll, we'll talk about the CCA Tritical a little bit. Um, so the CCA Tritical is one of our newer reticles. Uh, it's a grid uh, reticle, yep. a mill-based grid reticle, yep. uh, similar to a Horus or something like that. Um, I have, you've used it a couple times. Yeah, field, yeah, right? yeah. I've used it a few times. It's really intuitive, yeah. uh, especially if you're if you're sort of like I am when you come from the Horus world uh, and you're looking for a new reticle. Uh, this one's actually really, really neat. It's an open line kind of deal, uh, and it has you know some I feel like more intuitive uh, holds for movers. Um, yeah, the the V-shaped yeah. uh, parts above the, yeah. the horizontal for the movers, yeah. I think, are, are it's, it's a really yeah. brilliant idea. Yeah, if any of you guys are uh, if any of you guys out there are coming uh, to the Sniper Side Cup this weekend, uh, we'll have some Mark Eights and some Mark Fives out there with CCHs that you oh. guys can uh, check out on some guns Sweet. and stuff like that. Awesome, so. yeah, check it out. Uh, like he was saying, the the open sections, the bracketing uh, uh, points that you can, the aiming points. You know, is my, really my, cool. the, my most favorite thing about that reticle, though, is the the hard lines on the end. Mm -hmm. uh, because, oh, the thicker lines? Yeah, the thicker yeah. lines on the end. So, you know, like we were, we were doing snaps at, you know, 300 meters on man-sized targets, and they were just ring and steel every time. It's like, right. so it, for the competition world or the hunting world, yeah. uh, it's it's really good, especially for, yeah. you know, hunters, because, you know, if you're walking on that low power, all you don't really have to right. aim. You just kind of bracket the animal yeah, inside something those things, comes up and pull the trigger, and then you got meat in the freezer. It's kind of akin to the, uh, the loophole. Uh, loophole dot. Yeah. I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with that reticle. We've had it around for a really long time. Tapering lines into a, a fine aiming point. Yeah. Kind of the same idea. Yeah. Tapering lines that bring your eye to the center yes. of the reticle. Great for yeah. snapshots. Much yeah. like my fade, I love my reticles tapered. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, let's see. We'll get back to the list here. Number four, uh, bring back up ammo. That one, that one's bit me in the butt a couple times. Yeah. Again, you know, before I made a checklist, you know, uh, you oh, you know, you're putting all your gear. You don't take your tub of ammo. Right? Yeah, you, you, it's not in the range bag, right? At the very minimum, if you do forget your ammo, you got a couple backup, you know, yeah. boxes of yeah. ammo in your bag so, at all times. Yeah, ammo is super cumbersome, right? So yeah, uh, like what I do is, I mean, I know we're not doing the dump yet, but yeah, no uh, show. I use these pouches right here. Okay. And so you know, plug a little plug. Plug uh, Magpul, Magpul docker Doc pouches. pouches. Yeah. You know they zip. Swear they're watertight. Mind. You know I got all my prime ammo in here. Nice. Um, and I can load up. You know. Right. Probably. You know I think I've put about 300 rounds comfortably in that to okay. carry, and it's really easy to organize. Kind of compresses I mean, down nice can, and thin. You can too. see how it's flat right, yeah. how flat it lays. You know, this is uh, it's this is six five and three oh eight ammo. Nice. You know, that's super compressed, so yeah. it, it takes up minimal space. And I just I always just have a bunch of these in my car. Yeah. Uh, don't break it in my car. Um, <laughs> but there's they're always in there. Uh, nice. So and they're easy to carry. So if you were going to steal them, they'd be quick to get away with. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but yeah, don't break into his car. Yeah. But I mean, like, as far as like time uh, space management goes, like yeah. these things are king. Yeah. You don't have to have a lot of space to carry some spare ammo. Again, you spend time and money to get to the range. If you did forget the ammo, at least you can salvage something. You know, yeah. by having, you know, for me, it'd be some nine millimeter, some two two three, maybe some six five Creedmoor. It's probably the three calibers that I would keep in my yeah. bag. 
and just at all times. Yep. Though, if you do break into the stash, replenish it after you're done. Yeah, for sure. Because yeah. then, then you're going to yeah. be <laughs> in the same boat, right? Yep. Yep. Uh, number five. This probably is my favorite one, and it sounds counterintuitive to what you kind of think, uh, or, you know, historically what going to range has been, but it's add some stress. Yeah. Right? Uh, because I think too many times we go to the range and we just uh, uh, sit here on a line, yeah. shoot at a static, static target, static shooting, static yeah. shooting, or and, belly shooting. Yeah, which yeah. which is great, and that teaches it fundamentals. Has its, place, yeah. has its place, absolutely. But you hopefully you have a range where you can get yeah. to, or uh, for us, I mean, national forces right here, we're yeah. really spoiled. Yeah, you go out there and where you can move and shoot and do different yeah. uh, uh, things to get your heart rate yeah. up. Right. So shooting. You know, shooting static again is much different than shooting with, you know, 140 beat per minute, yeah. you know, heart rate, yeah. uh, where you're breathing hard and you gotta do something, you know? And you can get pretty extravagant. You could yeah. get some CrossFit stuff, some medicine balls, yeah. some stuff like that. Yeah. Or you just do some burpees, well, just well, do some push ups. I mean, even just adding a time stress uh, yeah. oh, to your shooting. That's what we were talking about that uh, earlier, time stress. You know, yeah. That really stresses people out, uh, you know, just even time stress and then alternate shooting positions. You know, yeah. alt for for whether it's rifle, pistol, or whatever. Like we tell our guys all the time, you know, you gather your dope in your belly, you zero your gun on your belly, but the fight happens on your knees, or right. it happens, you know, right? Because well, the environment gets a vote, right? Right, right, you know, right. So. Which is a much harder, you know, position. To, I mean, yeah. you can get into some pretty crazy ones like urban prone, where you're down there on your head yeah. and trying to shoot yeah. under stuff. Yep. Um, do that, you know, after you've ran around, you know, the range a couple times, yeah. you know, accelerated heart rate, and. The thing is, you know, it's that's kind of a big thing now. I think uh, with the tactical crowd is yeah. starting to do that that kind of stuff. Uh, but the, for the hunting guys too, um, that's really going to up your game when you're uh, out in the field. And maybe you just had to scramble up a steep hill or something like yeah. that. Or being uh, able to take a precision shot with an elevated heart rate is right. very important. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Even even if you didn't have to scramble up a hill or you know your ad, you know. Yeah. You see that buck, and yeah. your heart's going to start beating yeah. faster, right? Yeah. So how do you, how can you control your your body with that elevated yeah. heart rate and make sure that you can shoot precisely? Yeah. Um, it's train like you fight, train like you hunt. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. That's it's it's pretty self-explanatory. But again, we forget to do it when we're out there a lot. Yeah. We just get complacent. We just want to train what's easy, right? Yeah. You know, you're like, oh, I shot this really tight group. Yeah. It's like, no, start moving around and yeah. open that group up and see where your limitations yeah. are. Yeah, right? well, that, that's something I like about, like, uh, Garrett at Cogworks or, or yeah. Drew over at Bear Solutions is, yeah. is every time I've every time I've talked to those guys or shot with those guys, like, it's something new every time. And it's, like, it's it's not maybe stress that elevates my heart, but it's things that stress my mind out, yeah. which is as important. Yeah, right? oh, because yeah, yeah, mental, mental stress. Yeah, having yeah. to do... Um, uh, not to name drop again, but uh, uh, Lucas had us out, right? And we were shooting targets, and you had to take two numbers and add them together, and that was the number that you had to shoot. Yeah. So you're having to do math problems yeah. really quick, yeah, it's cognitive and then shooting. Stress. So yeah. cognitive stress yeah. uh, is also another great one. You can take a piece of cardboard and you write numbers on yeah. it, and do whatever you yeah. want. Yeah. Sometimes Drew just tells me I'm chubby. And <laughs> yeah. I really, just catch yeah. you off guard, and you're yeah, like, oh, that, what do I do? That really hurts. <laughs> yeah. 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 You, do, you don't look like you have many feelings, but you know. Yeah, well, um, we're all onions. So, so those are kind of the, the, the top five uh, uh, tips that we have. Again, they're on the website. I, I also have a, a gear list on there. I Basically what I did, I, I took my gear bag or my range bag, I dumped it out, uh, literally dumped it out and just went through everything and listed it there. So hopefully maybe there's some good ideas uh, there for you guys, something you can add to your range bag. Uh, that might make life easier. Uh, but speaking of range bags, we're gonna we're gonna look at Mr. Uh, Warren's range yeah. bag here and see what we got. So um, most of the shooting that I do is really pretty much geared towards long range precision. Okay. Um, so this is my bag for long range precision. It's what I bring to competitions. It's what I bring basically to every uh, range event, every course we teach. Um, so it starts in a vertex bag, uh, just because I like the way that the vertex bags are set up. I like yeah. the open center. Uh, I like the shelving that's at the bottom. I actually take those shelves out, uh, and that's where I slide all my ammo. Okay. Uh, so I have my I have my bags basically set up. Yeah. So there's ammo bags. I have a tool bag. Nice. Uh, my tool bag has you know different things in it, ring wrenches. Nice. Um, these things are pretty clutch, and I just figured out that they actually <laughs> make these in half the size. Oh, nice. Uh, so I need to go buy one of those, but a good set of Allens. Yeah. Um, 
This is, I got the same thing too. I got a, a dock pouch that is yeah, specifically it's a dedicated tools, toolkit. Yeah, and and it never leaves the range bag, yeah. right? Yeah, I don't I don't use those tools when I'm at home because I know I'm not going to put exactly. them away. Exactly. Right. Um, and then one of my favorite things uh, that we started implementing was just having these fix it sticks. Yeah. Um, these <laughs> things are really neat because they come apart. Right, mm -hmm. and just like three easy pieces, and then they have different uh, Torx heads that you can put in there. Yeah. Um, so, so they're actually and they snap together. They're actually torque yeah. wrenches. Yeah. Um, this, they're preset. Yeah. So you got sixty-five inch pounds, yep. I think, on that yep. one, right? Which then, is the side nut for your mount. Yep, for Mark IV mounts. And then what, twenty-five inch pounds or whatever yeah. for the ring top one. So it it would fit on just like this, yeah. and then it would you know, yeah. it would torque over. These are actually really neat. They started in the mountain biking community. Oh, okay. And then we sort of just adapted them to the tactical community it, it or is, the hunting community because we make a hunting set too. It has been such a lifesaver. I was gonna, I, I have this right here, a little plug. So on my belt that I wear at the range usually, um, I have fix it sticks like on the back. Yeah. And I can't tell you how many times I've actually been online yeah. and someone has an issue and they're like, oh, I gotta find it. And I'm like, no, I got, I got the tool right here. Yep. So uh, yep. again, not not much that weight, not much weight, doesn't take up a lot of space. Um, now I'm not gonna be able to get this thing to sit up there. Super embarrassing. Super embarrassing. So awkward. All right. Um, what what else? Obviously PPE. So I got my Oakley iPro here. Uh, my Liberators. These nice. are dual use for me because I use them in the military as well. Okay. Um, Obviously, a shooting bag. Shooting bag. Very essential important. for building a stable firing position. Yep. Uh, this is a arm board made by RE Factor Tactical. Yeah. Uh, and then what I do is Magpul actually makes these neat cards that are like cheater cards. Oh, cool. Um, and they fit specifically in here, right? So depending on what density altitude I'm in, yeah. I'll just slide one in there and this slides on my arm. So when I'm doing a sh competition or when we're shooting or something yeah. like that, I have all my drops right here. You know what? I, I could see that, you know, um, um, catching on even in the hunting community. Yeah. Well, um, I, do, I do that same thing do when you I You take hunt. it when yeah. you hunt? So you yeah. Got, yeah. So you have all your information, all your drops right there on your arm, kind of like it probably came from uh, quarterbacks, right? They yep. got all the plays, yep. right, yep. on their on their yep. arms. So it's kind of a cool um, deal. And then this is my command center. Uh, it's basically in a tactical tailor bag. I have my Kestrel okay. uh, with applied ballistics in it. Nice. Uh, obviously some pens, and then my actual data book okay. that has all of my hard dope in it. Yeah. Uh, so then I just transcribe that to that, and uh, it's it's a really nice, cool. um, really nice. I think that's way. important too. Having uh, writing utensils at the yeah. range, um, you've got to take notes. Um, you know, write anything down. The last is the last thing in here is just sort of uh, this is like where <laughs> like my pens and pencils will be kept. Any sort of soft paper that I want to keep out of the rain, I'll put in this one. Cool. Um, then obviously, uh, when you get to the range, I don't conceal carry at the range because I'm laying mm. on my belly. Right. Um, this is obviously clear. Yes, sir. Okay. Yep. Um, so I put my pistol in there. It fits nicely uh, with my holster. And then this is where I keep um, sort of like any sort of accessory items that I'm going to need. I got my I got my mags in here. Um, my uh, range cool. finder. Oh, we, so so again, we'll, we'll we'll talk a little bit about the. Um, the kit that we have as a company, as loophole that you know would be in your range bag. Obviously, range finder super important. Yeah. Even if you're shooting short range, yeah. it's good. You're gonna be like, hey, I want to shoot, you know, 15 yards from the target. Well, yeah. what's 15 yards? Yeah. Boop. You know. Yeah. But uh, so this is our new 2800. Um, this is probably the best uh, monocular range finder uh, on the market, or soon to be on the market. I think yeah. it's shipping. No, we're soon. shipping right now. Actually, you're shipping right yeah. now. Awesome. Um, so 2,800 yard range finder, we've even got the range a little bit further. Yep. So, um, you know, and, and, and not again, you know, we're, we're shooting long range, obviously, you know, when people say, oh, 2,800 yards, you're not gonna shoot 2,800. Well, you sure am. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, John will. Uh, <laughs> but it's good to know um, distances if you if you spot something and yep. you know, okay, it's that far away yep. and I gotta, I gotta stock in a yep. little bit closer or um, get my position up a little bit further. Yeah, I actually, uh, just not from a long range shooting uh, sort of area, but when I'm hunting, what yeah. I do is I use this to build target reference points if I'm glassing a place, right? right so yeah, I'll say, exactly. hey, that cut is 400 meters away. Yeah. You know, that, that fill is, you know, 200 meters away, it's or great, that spur is 300 meters away, and then tip. I just write those down so I know if an animal pops over there, I can spin onto my dope and I can, I can you know, cool. can get after it. And uh, that has the new Alpha IQ system in it too, so yeah. we've, we've boosted the, the signal a little bit. Um, basically, it's, it's quicker, it's more accurate, 
um, and it's more precise yep. too. Uh, I don't know how the Wizards did it with uh, the, yeah. the the software Eric's, in there, yeah. but they made some tweaks and this. It literally, it's not marketing mumbo jumbo. This stuff, no, it's, it's this good. thing actually works. Yeah. Uh, Eric's really, really, really good at math. He's really good <laughs> at math. Way better than us at math, yeah. for sure. Um, um, uh, we yep. also have the tracker in there, too. So it's something, actually, I keep a tracker on my uh, chest plate that I usually take to the uh, range. Uh, but uh, just to have thermal, you never know when you're going to need it. Yeah. Um, it's just something good to have. Even, you know, it doesn't take a lot of you know, space in your range bag. So yep. uh, something to think about. Uh, and then I think the last thing I have, uh, usually what sits on top of all that is my spotting scope. Uh, my spotting scope and then I lay uh, my tripod. Uh, this is one of our carbon fiber tripods. I lay that down. It's been painted up there black and really better looking than this. But uh, <laughs> I lay that down on top of the bag because uh, like we were saying, when you're shooting alternate positions, um, a lot of those positions that we shoot or that I shoot because of the way that I hunt and what I did in the military, uh, we use the tripod to support a lot of that. Uh, so we have a hog saddle on there that can clamp the rifle, uh, and it also can clamp our Mark IV spotters. Um, Perfect. So these spotters are pretty clutch because they do have a reticle in them. Yeah. Um, and even our gold ring, uh, which is basically this exact same spotter with a gray body and a gold ring around it, we even have uh, yeah, reticles the inside of those. Yeah, impact the impact reticles. reticle, right? Yeah, and you can get TMRs and stuff put in there through the custom shop if you're hunting in mills like I do. Yeah. Um, but or just get a Mark IV one. Or, yeah. yeah. It's just important. Um, it gives you reference points. So being a spotter, now you can call out, you know, you're talking the same language that's in the scope. So when you call out, you can call out corrections, you know, yeah. point, point 0.2 mils to the right or whatever. Yeah, because you don't always, you know, you don't always hit the target the first time. Yeah. Uh, even though everything we're doing is trying to maximize a, right. a hit, you uh, know. Uh, Rocky Mountain Adventure on Instagram there uh, asked what data book that is again. Just uh, uh, so who was yeah. interested. Yeah, so it's a Magpul data book. Um, you can get them on Magpul's website. Uh, it's really neat. It comes in just like this. Uh, it's based off of density altitude, and then what you do is you just take some 550 cord right here and you string it through the holes. Um, it's a uh, it's a really it's a really neat it's a really neat book to have, uh, especially because of the varying environmental climates that we shoot in. Density altitude changes a lot. I won't explain what density altitude <laughs> is on here uh, because it, I'm sure up, yeah, I'm sure if I started talking about density altitude, a lot of you would probably sign off. That's a whole uh, other show. Actually, we should do a show on density altitude. Yeah, that'd be that'd neat. Be, that'd be really um, but yeah, it's and they're you know they're they're waterproof, so you know they're not going to get wet. They're easy to write on. I use ink pen or uh, yeah. uh, matte markers to yeah. write on them and alcohol and pens. Another cool one is uh, the right in the rain stuff. Yep. Uh, if you're again, you want something that's going to be waterproof. Uh, weatherproof when yeah. you're out there. And you can write on that with a pencil as well. Yeah, for sure. Speaking of weather, we actually did get a really good question. Uh, Jay, Jay Bysinga on Instagram there. Uh, do you test ammo using various weather conditions? Uh, I do. I use, uh, so obviously any sort of climate that you're in, uh, you're going to want to confirm the zero. So whenever I'm, if I'm traveling the hunt, say I zeroed my rifle here in Oregon, but I'm going up to Colorado to hunt, yeah, you're gonna you know, confirm. and it's going to be very yeah. cold. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna get a zero shift, so I'm gonna go ahead and confirm that. Yeah, um, for sure. Yep. Yeah, it's important to know what 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 your ammo is gonna do in different environments. Um, he also asked if there's a brand of powder type that's uh, con that's consistent in all weather types. Mm, uh, yeah, I don't really reload that much. Yeah, I just shoot factory. Yeah, I stuff, shoot factory prime. Yeah. Uh, whatever's in theirs is really good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Prime ammo works yeah. good too. I like it. Um, is there any benefit of an angled spotting scope over a straight one? Uh, 556 Overland on uh, Instagram there. Um, the, the, the angled can be nice um, because uh, of, of body posture, you know, yeah. where you're at. It's, it, again, it kind of comes down to personal well, preference. So what I actually, you know, for me, I always have used straight spotting scopes yeah. um, because I don't like to look into things. I like See, to look through things. And if you're talking about it just from a... Um, you know, a body, a body posture sort of anatomical, you mm -hmm. know, way. Um, it, for me, what matters is the tripod's ability to sort of fit to the landscape, right? Gotcha. Because I, it doesn't matter what position I'm in. If I can make that tripod fit to what I need it to do, mm -hmm. straight or angled isn't going to matter. Yeah. But if I'm standing, yeah. I don't want to be doing this, <laughs> looking through a spotting scope all day, because that's you're going to get lower back fatigue, you're going to get neck fatigue, yeah. that's going to lead to eye fatigue, and that's then that's going to that's going to fatigue <clears> your shot, which is, you know, then you're going to come home and whomever's going to make fun of you because <laughs> so and so on Instagram <laughs> hit a good animal and you couldn't you couldn't make it happen. Right, right. Yeah, um, I, I, I use the standard 12 to 40 by 60 spotting yeah. scope, same one there with the straight one. Um, the, the thing, you can use it upside down too, use yeah. it like that. 
um, use it a periscope if you want to look yeah. over something too. Or you can mount it sideways. Mount sideways. There's, yeah, there's there's all kinds of it's this thing's really awesome, especially with the different kind of mounts. Like badger mounts are really good um, because you can you can basically turn the spotting scope any way you want. Uh, you can, you know, so if you need to lay down in the prone, like a lot of the times we'd be laying in the prone and the mount, the tripod would be here, the mount would be here, and we'd be laying down looking through it like that. Right. Um, so these are very versatile. They've been around for a long time. Yeah. People use them because they work. Um, <coughs> work and really well. they're supported by accessories uh, in, in the market, so. Multiple different accessories where yeah. you can <clears throat> take the spotting scope and attach different stuff to it. We, did, yeah. we didn't really talk about that. That's kind of a cool concept yeah. now that's come on too. So, so you know, you had your Kestrel yeah, on Yeah, just right? like those, the Badger mounts we were talking about. Yeah. Um, so the Badger mount locks onto this ring here, right? And then it has some pick rails that run like this, right? So a lot of times we'll put a DP Pro up here just so you can look in and get a gross target. Yeah. Uh, and then you can get a fine. And then you connect this. This is a Badger mount too uh, for a K5. So this thing's really clutch, and yeah. it's it's not expensive at all. Um, I think these are 29, 29 bucks, really? and it attaches right here. So yeah. now you have a command center. You're right there, and you're just you're right. just making people hurt. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, it or comes in really handy. Yeah, like, again, like you mentioned, having the having the red dot on top. Uh, one of the issues with spotting, you go to the range, and you know you have your power all the way up to 40. Yeah. So what happens when you turn your power up is your field of view gets lower and guys will struggle sometimes. They'll be up on that high power and they're trying to transition or find something and um, uh, they can't do it because again, the field of view is so yeah. narrow. So what you can do, you can put that red dot on top, use it as a reference point. So just pop up real quick, use the red dot that you've co-witnessed thereabouts you know, yeah. with the scope and put the red dot, look down, and you're going to be magnified on the object yep. that you're, the target that you want to shoot, right? Yep, you can even, you know, you do that put your Kestrel, get a range finder yeah. um, that you can put on there and you can just shoot targets just like that and you have everything right here. So if you're spotting for somebody, uh, you have really no excuse not right. to give them the accurate information they need. Yeah, we, we've done some really crazy, I mean, you put night vision, you know, yeah. PVS-30 up yeah, front the, there. Yeah, the and, midnight mile. Right, yeah. midnight mile. And, I mean, you can you can attach all kinds of things to yeah. there. So yeah, super, super good. Um, let's see, another question off uh, IG there. Is there such a thing as thermal or nighttime scopes uh, or combinations of two different devices. Um, uh, yeah, there yeah. Is, there's combinations. FLIR makes some combos that are really expensive and really, yeah. uh, I would say, not worth uh, the money if you're just hunting. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, if you're balling, you yeah. can do what you want. Yeah, uh, so thermal and night vision are, are two different things. Obviously thermal, like our LTO Tracker yeah. HD, uh, is gonna pick up heat signatures, yeah. uh, whereas night vision, um, you're not picking up heat signatures. You're actually yeah. um, you're illuminating ambient light. You're yeah, in the atmosphere. yeah, basically yeah. using starlight, right? Yeah. And, and illuminating that. And if you ever get a chance to try it and shoot yeah. at night, man, it's it's a cool yeah. experience. Nights, yeah, use a nights PVS thirty. Yeah, um, they're pretty clutch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's awesome. A good question. I should I should track back here and and say I think I said you know FLIR is not worth it. Those are actually really good pieces of equipment that we use in the military, and yeah. they're very amazing. They do a really good job, Angelo, um, at. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> what they do, uh, they're just very expensive uh, yeah. for the avid for the average for person. the average guy. I got to figure out how many mortgage payments am I going to miss? Yeah, to yeah, yeah. You're, you're paying you're paying for my car um, buying one of those. Armasite is Armasite, a good one. There's, yeah. a, there's a couple, there's a couple other ones, ones out there. Yeah. So um, you guys can you know shop around. Um, pig hunting has gotten really big at night. Totally, you yeah, know? yeah. A lot of those guys yeah, get pig get kitted out. Pig and varmint hunting. They'll, they'll use a spotter like this and put the night vision yeah. on there and spot. And, yeah, you, know. you go see some coyote hunters, they look like a sniper team coming to, come and make <laughs> yeah. some, come and do some work. Right, right. Well, I think we kind of touched on everything there. Um, you know, we, we went through the bag, we, we got the tips. So um, we're gonna give away the bag actually. So. One of the best questions here. I'm, I'm going to scroll through the questions real quick. I think quick one here. more question just came in oh, at the very one? bottom, didn't it? No, I don't think so. Uh, da, 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 what was a good question? The hair care products, that was a pretty good question. I'm not mad at that. Yeah. I also use a volumizer, but I'm not going to talk about <laughs> that. <laughs> uh, you know what? I really like the question about the various weather conditions and, and, and testing your ammo in the various weather conditions. That was a really uh, a, astute observation and point there. So uh, Jay by, uh, by Singa, I hope I'm saying that right. Um, you got the bag, so uh, DM us and uh, we'll get your information 
and um, uh, we'll send that uh, Vertex bag out to you. You'll have a whole new uh, bag to fill with all kinds of goodies. Again, go to the, uh, uh, the homepage there, loophole.com. Check out the story. That'll have the list of gear on there, give you some ideas of what to fit in that bag there. Yep. And uh, yeah, so John, thanks for joining me. Thanks for yeah. bringing your bag. Yeah, thanks, thanks for, for going me. through everything. And uh, until next time, we'll see you guys.